Okay, so we're going to go in three, two, one. Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode 58. The Peck and Beckham. Darren Ward, thanks for joining us, mate. Great to be here. And uh, thanks for inviting me. No worries, mate. The Peck and Beckham. Let's start with that. Was you aware of the surname? Uh, the nickname, sorry, the surname? The yeah, nickname. if only, yeah. Um, yeah, do you know what? It was quite a funny one. I think I've spoken about this a few times. It was um, unaware. I don't think I've ever ever been kind of called up up until we come back to the changing room and one of the local newspapers was just on the floor and it was kind of like look down the floor and it's like a full back page picture of me and on the back it's got like the peck and beckham and um i started laughing you know it's just one of those one of those things isn't it you know who's who's come up with that i still don't know who's come up with it you know to this day but you know i've certainly been called worse things in my life so um i took it as a compliment yeah, I, I think it was, mate. Look, and obviously, it was a lot based around your haircut, but I always thought that you was, we're just saying it's because you're on, no, centre-backs now, they can play, can't they? Back then, big area horrible fuckers couldn't really play, but I thought you could, you know, you was a bit, a bit of a player as well, you know, you could play at the back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I, I had moments and I, I always wanted to. I got, cool, I got a, a real drum in when I was young from wanting to, um, in a first team game, because for example, when I was at, when I was at Watford, I was in the first team kind of set up when I was a first year YTS back in those days. It obviously can yeah, be now. Course, yeah. um, and I've wanted to play football, and we're playing Brentford away in a league match, and I'm trying to play out from the back and one twos around centre forwards, and I've got Graham Taylor and Kenny Jacket absolutely hammering me. Um, get it long, get it wide, and. <laughs> I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm young, I'm brave, I'm fearless. Yeah. Um, so as much as as much as I I did at times, I didn't do as much as what I would have liked. Um, but certainly did near the near the back end of my career away from Mill. So yeah, yeah. And you know, we say about nicknames, there's worse to have, of course, you know, we we're jumping ahead a bit here, but you formed yeah. a formidable partnership with Matty Lawrence, his nickname was Shaggy. Yeah, exactly. uh, he's been on great guy. What, you know, it was an unlikely partnership. It really thrived, mate, didn't it? it Resulting eventually in the FA Cup final. What was he like, Matty Lawrence? Yeah, Matty's just a um, unique guy. Very different. You know what? Two very different characters. Yeah. Honestly, you, you couldn't have got two different guys if you tried. But there was just something there on the pitch. It it wasn't just like it took a few weeks or a few months. It was just instant. It was just straight away. Um, do you know what? I, I remember when we got kind of put together we we were we were quite mature about it in terms of you know we still what was i probably 25 at the time mm. 7 28 and we actually spoke about it we said look this is what i like this is what you know you like let's find a way and let's get this going because there's a great opportunity for us here and, and yeah. that's how we looked at it i remember having a conversation about it to this day and um matt is a smart guy a very intelligent guy mm. and um you know, he's, you, you could talk to him, you could talk to him and he would talk back. It wouldn't, there would be like, yeah, you, know, you have your moments, having a shout and a, and a rant. But overall, we both took it very constructively and, and built on that. And that was a great foundation for us. Mm. Yeah. God knows how many clean sheets we had. It was well over 20 first season or well over 20 to second. You know, you're talking incredible, you know, arguably probably the best of the history of the club. You know, yeah. clean he was a right back originally as well when he was developed into a centre back. Yeah, yeah, Matt was a right back and very calm on the ball, very, very calming figure to be honest. Mm. You know, he, he he loved the tackle, but he was calm around it, and you never see it coming. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, we, we we both pushed each other, we both kind of backed each other, pushed each other, we stayed fit, um, and um, yeah, f- fantastic run we had at the club. Mm. Going back to the beginning, you joined in 2001 originally till 2005, brought to the club by Mark McGee. Coming into, um, you know, sometimes you'll get people in because you're struggling or, you know, you need covering that area, but you just come into a team that have been promoted and were then going well in the championships. Was it difficult to fit into that process? Um, do you know what? Uh, not really. And the reason not really is that um, I, I played in the Premiership and... I've, I'd always been high level, you know. Um, I knew I had a lot of clubs watching me previously. Um, I was young, I'd just turned 23. Um, 
I had a severe injury in my right leg. I snapped my shin in two places. Um, that's when I was really wild, by the way. And it's my <laughs> fault. And it was my fault I broke my leg. How crazy is that? Is it, have you heard anyone say it's my fault? No, you know, I didn't. I was wild. I wanted to really tackle someone hard. And I paid the consequence. And that cost me two years of football, more or less. Which, you know, when you're coming through, I was coming through the likes of Rio Ferdinand, Matty Upson, Neil Clement, you know, the standard at centre halves are really high. And we were all in, in around the first team of our, of, our, of our club at a very young age. And yet, silly, silly tackle. And um, I come back, um, and as soon as I knew when I had the metal plate and six screws out of my leg, um, that I, I knew that I had a chance and I knew I could get back to um, a similar level, maybe not as good as what I could have been if I had those two years. Yeah. And I was out previously for about six to eight weeks of an ankle injury uh, and a bone floating in my ankle. So I had a lot of time out from about 19, just before around 19 to 21. So I come back from that, played in the Prem, and I was marking Thierry Henry, Burkham, Solskjaer, um, playing against Skulls, Keane, Giggs. You know, I was playing against the top in the world, not just, mm. you know, in around the country, it's in the world. So um, I was confident. I had a really good season. Uh, I played, I think it was 48 games the season before in the champ. Um, Viali come in. He had a massive pot of money to spend. And he knew what he wanted. He wasn't really interested in many other things other than what he wanted us to bring a lot of players in. And um, I just thought, what am I doing here? I've, I've got to leave. You know, I really enjoyed my time at Watford. I think it was my kind of first professional club I, I kind of signed my contract at. Um, but it's time to go. Um, and as soon as I knew Mill, I've said this many times, that just something about Mill, I really enjoyed. I really, really enjoyed. We had a, we had a coach called Tom Wally. Yeah. A bit of a legend at the club at Millwall as well, especially with the youth set up. And um, he used to tell us stories about Millwall. He was our coach when I was getting fit for my leg. And it, it just, he still wore some of his Millwall kit at Watford. <laughs> we trained him that. And he did, honestly, he did. And, uh, and I just, I just, I just loved it. I just thought, that is a bit of me. That, how the club is and how it's set up, the fans, where it is, it's that, that kind of buzz about it. It was buzzing at the time. Get me there. Um, and I remember Mark McGee come to watch. We had a reserve game against Barnet and um, and we played and um, he kind of, I think he left just after half time and that's enough. Um, my agent said, look, he wants to sign you and he wants to see you tomorrow, I think it was, or the day after. Um, agreed with the club straight away and yeah, moved on. So I, I was, I, I didn't even ask any other clubs to my agent. Um, I didn't even ask. I said, look, if Neil interested, I'm gone. As long as we can agree certain bits, because I've not long just signed a new, what is it, a four and a half year deal at Watford. On Premier League money. <laughs> on not bad money. Yeah, it was good money. <laughs> good money. So I think when Mill Mill actually asked to see my contract, they didn't believe that I was earning that sort of money um, at 23, um, especially coming up. They thought, oh, we're, we're getting easy. But yeah. Um, I wasn't asking for the world either, you know, in terms of my contract at Watford was what it was. Normally when you get brought, you ask for more. Of course, yeah. That wasn't the case. Um, I was, I was, I wanted to sign for Mill. I said, look, you know, my time, as long as you can cover these years. So let's sign up, was it a three and a bit, yeah, whatever it was, contract, yeah, I'm there. So, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, the rest is history. Nice. You came into a, a club, obviously, I said, just been promoted. A lot of young talent, Tim Cahill, Paul Ifield, Tony Warner, Stephen Reid, amongst others. But in your position, we had Sean Dyche and Stuart Nevercott. That's right. Did you come in when a uh, point when Dyche just got injured? Is that right? No, Dyche was fit still. Was fit. Dyche and Nevers, they were playing. They were playing well. Um, and um, I remember, what was it? I come in for a couple of days. We played West Brom away. And uh, Mark McGee actually changed the team um, and he played, I think he played three at the back and we come in and we won, it was 2-0, I'm sure it was 2-0, um, clean sheet, first game, played well, over the moon, couldn't get a better start. Um, I remember sitting on the coach after, we kind of introduced these like recovery drinks and 
And I'm like, right, okay, I was into a few bits, but not these, you know. And, and yeah. that's what it was, it was quite a bit of a lure to me because um, people know me. I'm quite into lifestyle and keeping yeah. fit and um, kind of marginal gains. I'm massively into that. And uh, and Mill at the time, they were offering players a package that per year you're going to be seeing a top um, kind of guy. And Matt Lavelle, his name was nutritionist. And you do this, you do that, you get these supplements and I was I was just brought because that's what I wanted. I knew that 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 would help my career and help mm. my development in football. So um and we got into the coach after the game and I said, Dashi, would you do this? He goes, I'll just down it. So I'm like down in this massive like it felt like I was drinking about over a pint in a litre of this stuff and like, my belly was full for hours after. And I'm like, I'm not doing that again, Daishi. I'm sipping that. And he went, Yeah, I, I sometimes I don't always that's a it's a bit of a wind up I think uh, <laughs> Back in it, but uh, you're a young guy, right? You're listening to these older guys, and and Daishi was um, Daishi was spot on, absolutely. What a lovely guy he was, by the way. Did you think that you know, Mill and Mark McGee had, had incorporated that? Did you think that was a bit ahead of the game, maybe in terms of you, you weren't doing that at Watford all this, you know, extra benefits? Yeah, no, it, it was yeah, it was ahead of the game, definitely. Mm. Um, at Watford, there were players talking about it, there was a nutritionist and a kind of like a, it was, it was a combined. His name was Neil something or other. I forgot his surname, uh, but it was a fitness coach. Knew a bit about nutrition, but you weren't getting what kind of package you're getting at Mill. It was mm. a lot. You, you, it's like thousands and thousands a year you're spending on this for for, for the players. And um, yeah, I, I was because I kind of had a little look and you know seen that there's a lot going on with this. That, um, yeah, it was it was just a huge lure and fair play for me all to yeah you know, it's like twenty years ago. Oh, you get a budget and your manager's brave enough. You just got promoted. What would managers normally do? They'd normally spend it on players. And he's going, no, we need to move on to another level. We need to get our players to kind of optimal fitness, recovery wise. You know, stronger, fitter. Um, our credit for it, real, real credit mm. for it. You said we need to go to the next level. I mean, we nearly did. We nearly went back to back promotions. You walked, your company joined in October, so walked straight into pretty much another almost into a promotion push. And then we make the playoffs, don't we, against Birmingham? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, was, it. was the, I mean, I spoke to other players from that time. They said, you know, the confidence was so high when we got promoted. We just thought, you know, different division doesn't matter. We're capable. And of course, yeah. we had the players. Was that like walking straight and almost pretty much involved in the playoffs? Yeah, it was. Um, so when I played West Brom, um, Daishi and Nevers were playing really well. And I actually come out of the team. He went back to about four. He, he spoke to me, Mark. He said, look, um, we've been playing well. I think this formation will, will suit. I can't remember who the next game was. Um, and I've got no problems with that. You know, if I'm, I'm never happy if I'm not playing. And people know me. I'm never happy. But I understand. And I yeah. won't, you know, spit my dummy out. I won't cause an issue. I'll work harder. That's how I'm made. You know, I've always been the same. I've never thrown anything in. You know, and there's been a few times where arguably, you know, I think some some would. But um, so I had a spell out of the team for, for a number of months and they kept on, the team kept on winning. Um, I played a few reserve games. I remember now, in fact, a reserve game at home and um, I didn't play particularly well, to be honest. And I got dogs abuse from the fans. I got absolutely hammered. And they were saying, you know, Get back to Watford, waste the money, 500 grand. Um, and uh, do you know what? I, I remember after the game thinking, yeah, do you know what? I've got to prove myself. I've got to prove myself. And I mm -hmm. did. I rolled my sleeves up, I cracked on, got in the team, and then stayed in the team. I think it was what the last eight to 10 games or something like that it was of that season. Um, got to the uh, got to the playoffs and um just narrowly missed out, didn't we? Narrowly missed out. Yeah. What an occasion that was. But but we knew, we knew that whoever won that game, we, we were talking about it. You're winning it. We're too strong for the other two teams. Whoever wins that game is Norwich in the end. It's too strong. There's too much momentum with between us two. You know, whoever gets through this game, you know, you won. And it was tight, wasn't it? It was tight. Um, all for both legs, one yeah. all, and then that, that last minute of it of kind of. Extra time, oh, it was a it was a blow if ever there was, um, and I think that that kind of had an impact on us coming back the season after. 
Well, I'll get into the first result of the, the next season in a minute, but I just want to talk a bit more about Mark McGee. You said, um, you know, he, 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 he said to you, you're not going to be in. And a lot of players that I've had on say that, as long as you're told the manager yeah. stroke you, then you ain't got a product. I mean, you want to play, but at least you've been told why and you're not going to be in the team. And he ain't shit ass you and just dropped you and not told you. Was he yeah. good at that management, McGee, putting his arm around the player? Yeah, do you know what? I, I always got on really well with Mark. I really did. He, especially, so the situation I was in at Watford, when he signed me, he drove all the way to Sophomore House, which was, you know, basis in Auburn's um, 20, 25 minutes from where I lived in Watford at the time. So it, it made all that effort. Um, he'd watch me come back the day after, I think it was, to meet me. And he said, look, I'm going to be honest, I'm willing to pay this money for you. You know, I see you fitting in well with the team. Um, we've got Joe Dolan, who's out injured at the minute. He'll be fit. I see you two playing um, as future centre-halves at Millwall. You know, mm-hmm. never and I should do well at the minute. But I've done my homework on you. I've seen where you're at, you know, and... I think anyone that had you would have seen the, the kind of pedigree that, that, that was there. It was kind of you know, from a family of football, four of us um, yeah. we've been professionals and four all academies and it's there, you know. So um, I've been chosen to play for England when I was 18, um, the under 20s, so a couple of years up. Um, but I had a bad injury and I think a lot of people wrote me off um, and thought, he snapped his leg in two places. He ain't getting back from that. So fair play to him. You know, and, and I, I always, you know, if I've seen him since I've seen him a few times, always they do mark, you know, all good and, mm. you know, have a lot of respect, a lot, a lot of respect for him. I think it's quite brave for him as well, actually. He's, he's gone out, he's spent all this money on a highly rated youngster from Watford and then to drop you out again, fans must have been going, hang on, what's going on? You brought this guy in, any chance of getting him in somewhere? Do you know what I mean? He's played well when he's first come in, you dropped him out for no reason. So it must have been brave for McGee as well to, to go with it. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? It is and it's, it's not. If you look at it, I suppose, you know, at the time, you're just thinking, you, 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 aren't you? That, that's what you do as a player, you know, especially the, the age I was, 23 years old. And, um, but if you looked at who was ahead of me, you know, you had Daishi, you know, he's just a seasoned pro, you know, the amount you can learn from him. Nevers, um, mm. Premiership football, ex-Tottenham, um, set great examples. Um, I'm learning. I'm learning as well. And as much as I want to be playing, you know, these guys are playing well. And they know that if they don't perform, they know that I'm going to be walking into that team. Yeah. What's going to happen? And that is what actually did happen in the end. Not because they weren't performing, but Daishi got injured. And then I took my chance and he didn't lose. He just just kept Mm -hmm. going. Um, And then he had, a, I think, a harder decision to make. Much harder. Does he drop me or does he kind of drop Daishi when he got fit? Um, and he stuck with me. He stuck with me. And I was, you know, very thankful for that. I Daishi on the shoulder every two minutes. Said, Wally, I need one more game. I've got a bonus coming. I'll give you a cut. I'm like, Daishi, what can I, honestly, he said, one more game, I'll get a bonus. I'm like, you know, after that drink, he told me about drinking that, that litre of whatever it was of, of, of recovery drink, Daishi. I don't know if to believe you or not, mate, but um, <laughs> yeah, whether it is put you out of a stomach bug. Exactly, yeah. But whether it's true or not, that he had a bonus, he <laughs> get back in. I said, no, Daishi, I, I've been sitting for most of the season, you know, and I have to, I have to play. I'm not going to, not going to play poorly or step out the team for you. It's the manager's decision. And of course. I've been waiting very patiently. I've been working my socks off. Mm. You know, I had a teeth kick. I, I played in the reserve game when Chopper come back. I think it was his first game back after his, uh, after the situation he had, um, test, uh, testicular cancer. And he played Oxford away, I think it was. I got my teeth kicked in. You know, I had a right few moments where I've gone for a header in the box and the guy's volleyed my teeth in. So oh, they, he didn't knock them out, but two of my teeth were facing backwards. And I've literally gone, right, let's go. Walked off the pitch, got Colin Clifford, who was one of the physios there, said, right, Badger, of course, call him Badger. Badger, get that van started up. We'll go in hospital, getting his teeth sorted out. <laughs> and everyone's looking around, going, what's this guy doing? So they're in the van heading to uh, into London and had my teeth fixed. And to be fair, it was... Uh, it was a, a long one. I, I had a gum shield in. I don't know if you remember the end of the season. Yeah. That's why, because I had my teeth kicked in. Jesus. Um, so, yeah, 
one of many things I've had, uh, one of many, many things, but yeah, patience. I certainly had a lot of patience to start off with. Yeah, so it's not bad to learn off those boys while you're not in the team, learning good things off them. But you said as well, the playoff push there had an effect on us going forward. As I said, we don't discuss bad things on this podcast, only positive, but Tony Ward painted a brilliant picture of the day, the next season on the opening day, when we lost 6 0 at home to Rotherham. <laughs> that was a that was hell of a start that way. Oh, do you know what? I don't think I've ever looked at Tony so many times in a game before either, because the ball kept going in the net. And like he's standing there, and Tony, he had a temper on him. You know, but again, you know, just a great understanding. What a guy, you know, what what a keeper at the time. Just fit the bill for that club, Tony, you know, and um but that that start of that season, you know, a lot of people asked what went on there. And I think I think it was a combination. I don't I, it wasn't just the playoffs. It was a big um discussion or ongoing discussion about the bonuses. Um That's right, yeah, I think someone else mentioned that, yeah. It was it was a nightmare and there was a lot of kind of unsettlement within the camp, you know, and, and we're we're going, how can this happen? We've just missed out on the prem, you know, on the prem. You know, we want to be going again. And this is what you're offering, you know. And and we weren't, you know, we were young guys, we weren't asking for ridiculous money at all. And when you're signing it, what is it the morning of the game? I think it was. It was, the, it was late on the afternoon, the day before, the morning of the game, one of the two, can't remember. That's not great planning. And if I was a coach, if I was a manager, I would not want my players doing that. You know, your, fo- your focus has to be on the game. Oops. Your role responsibility. What you, it's the first game of the season, guys. You've got to start it mean to go on. Mm. Uh, we, we didn't really do that, although we did bring it back. You know? I, I bet your bonuses got sorted straight away after that. Well, yeah, well, this is it. It was, I think, a lesson learned for the club. You know, a lesson yeah. learned. You know, and it wasn't the players getting together. It's guys. You know, when you get to a position, we were what a game away from Premiership football. Mm. You know, look at that. When's that happened since at, at Millwall? No. You know, and this is this is this is something that you don't get these opportunities very often. No, uh, don't don't kind of try to skim or shave for those things i think you sometimes you just got to go right here we go guys come on you know and, and find a way find a way to, to to keep that camp happy um because there were some really good players um mm. it was you know we all got on overall very different characters many different characters but on that pitch we got on well mm. you said there about you using to your fine margins and your clean living so I want to talk to you about a player that was at the club by this point who maybe, well, I know he wasn't because I've heard loads of stories on him. Two players, actually. One was, one wasn't. Steve Claridge. Yeah. He, what was he like, Claridge? Yeah, well, I think a lot of people used to call him the tramp, didn't they? <laughs> Steve the tramp. Um, I, I can, do you know what? I actually had, um, when, when people used to say, oh, he lives in his car, look, he's got pillows in his car, he's got this, he's got that. I'm going, to be fair, I'm kind of, I I I I used to play with a player. Um, his name he won't mind me saying this because he's he's a lovely guy. His name's Derek Payne, and he used to uh, Derek Payne, a real good real good footballer. He used to be a postman. He used to work for my old man. To be fair, at the post office in Harrow back in the day, and then he went for the kind of non-league um, route, and then Watford signed him. Right. Technically, incredible player, left foot, not the tallest guy, but. He used to come in at training with a Tesco bag. You know, he used to go on holiday with a Tesco bag. He, his car, you, you, you can hardly even see the seats. There's so much rubbish in there. So I kind of come from a place where we used to have a laugh and a joke with Derek about it. And he just he used to just laugh it off. So when I saw Steve, I actually thought, yeah, to be fair, I'm kind of used to it where I've come from. Um, but Steve was, uh, yeah, he was, he was a, again, a lovely guy, lovely guy. But yeah, lived his life in a certain way. They scored some serious goals. I was just about to say, imagine he lived it right, but maybe if he lived it right, maybe he would have been shit. I don't know. I don't know. But judging of a different player, he also came to the club, and we got on to him. He's going to feature heavily more going forward. Of course, Dennis Weiss hmm. came to yeah. the club as a player first and foremost. You think about that team, him and Kale centre mid, I feel Reed, you and fucking Matty Lawrence. It's a great side, isn't it? You, you've got a real side there. You know, you've got. Livers, Beach up front, Muzzy, 
you know what I thought was a real underrated player for real was Robbie Ryan. Yeah. He was honestly one of the best fullbacks I've ever played with because I, I used to predominantly in my career played, I think, what is it, 628 first team appearances I made, professional appearances in my career, which I'm really proud of. And the majority of those appearances I played on the left of the two in a four. And Robbie was, he's one of these players, he, he doesn't look very pretty on your eye, you know, as a player. Um, Again, top, top guy, Robbie, top, top guy. Um, but he was so, so kind of effective. He'd never get beat. You got what you kind of saw, you know. He was there every week. And I, I think at times when he left, I, I, I thought, wow, that was, um, he should have stayed. You know, I, I really liked him. And I, I, I built up a, a kind of a good relationship with him as well. Robbie to my left, uh, Matty to my right, and um, yeah, he was he he was he was fantastic. But um, yeah, why is he when he come in? You know, he, he um, inherited a, a really good squad. You know, a, a squad that that weren't really performing to their highest. Um, they were young. They were still learning, me included. You know, still young, um, and. Um, yeah, there, there were some fantastic players and some very good young players coming through as well, I must mm. say. Well, Ronnie Ball was actually one of them and he's always telling me that he was better than Robbie Ryan, so you just confirmed he definitely was. <laughs> uh, Billy was a good player as well. He was one of the young ones coming through. He really was. Yeah. I, I got really well with Bully. Really, really well. He's fine. Uh, and I know him personally. I, and I went out of him and Robbie Ryan for, uh, for a drink once and he drove Robbie mad all day and all night. Telling yeah. him he was better than him in the yeah, end. Robbie, was, yeah. Robbie just went, why aren't you fucking... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was about 10 o'clock at night. I probably started about 1 p.m. Oh, really? Yeah. But, but you know what? It's, um, but he was, I, I love, I had it both words. Again, two very different characters, two mm. very different players. Um, but really, I, I, I come of the season before that, um, when we went up to the, um, well, when we played Birmingham, I played a lot of football with Billy there. And um, again, he was just honest. He, would, he used to, take a few risks at times. I think that was more to do with um, him being young and um, he'd love it. He'd try and nutmeg him like in our third and I'm like, Billy, you can't be doing that, mate. You know, you're trying to nutmeg the, the guy. If it's, it's nil-nil and it's like five minutes into the game. Um, but yeah, there's, um, yeah, good characters, some good young players coming through and uh, a great, great time for the club. That second season, back in the champ, we finished ninth. Not, on, not a bad season, but We'll move on, as I said, because the next season, 2003-2004, was the most, one of the most definitely, you know, famous in the club's history. First and foremost, before we get on to the, the good, we'll cover the unfortunate. Mark McGee loses his job after a 1-0 home defeat at Preston. What? Were you expecting that? You, was that a shock when it came? Uh, yeah, uh, do you know what? When, when I joined the club, there, there seemed to be a few kind of issues and uh, quite a few voices in and around the club. I didn't know what was going on. It was very different to where I'd come from because Graham Taylor, he was the voice. And it, that was it. There weren't other voices and people coming in. And there was a few things going on and I didn't really get involved. I didn't know a lot about it, but that there was always seemed to be a little bit of friction um, happening. And I was surprised when he left, um, but it quickly kind of smoothed over by the appointment of of uh, Dennis, and then obviously very quickly Ray coming, so he, he straight away got going, you know, and um, you know it was uh, I think it was it Sheffield United the first game, mm. it may have been, um, and I remember that now he, he called us all after the game, and I'm driving home, um, and I've got like Dennis calling me, and I'm like, no oh, gaffer. I like still celebrating after the win. He's going, Well, you just want to say brilliant for me today, fantastic. Want to just let all you guys know how, how proud I am of, of all you guys. And I went, Yeah, no worries, it's my job. I said, Right, I'm going out now. I said, Is it is that all kind of and, and just kind of cracked on? And um, and that's the kind of with Dennis, you 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 could speak to him in that in that relaxed manner. Yeah. Uh, when, so when he, time, his, his attitude didn't change then when he from when he was a player to when he became manager, like didn't start. Um no, it, it was um, the reason that it kind of, it, it did at times when it was right to. So if it was a team meeting, 
you know you, you can't be pulling jokes out and doing stuff then but he was still a player as well so mm. he was in that kind of fine balance of getting the kind of manager's head over the player's head on and it's not easy i've done it myself uh, when i moved to swindon i was in that position yeah that was a real tough tough job and i, I didn't like it personally because i'm I'm too. I'm real focused as a player. I'm just. I need to play. I need to focus rather than trying to manage. It, yeah, that's what I prefer. I I, I I can do that myself if I'm not playing, but I'm not. The but the, the two just not for me. Um, and he he just handled it well. Dennis handled it well, and and as much as we were disappointed, it it, it quickly kind of smoothed over and continued. Uh, a shrewd transition as well to bring in Ray Wilkins. Yeah, yeah, Ray, Ray, who, what was it, not long ago, released me from Watford with uh, Viali. Oh. So, uh, yeah, it's quite funny, he come in and Ray wasn't, um, I say wasn't a fan of me, but he certainly didn't back me at Watford. And uh, I've said this many times, I've come in the first day of training when I heard, and, you know, just kind of casually pulled into the car park um, and, um, and he was hanging out the window. And out the window, and uh, I knew what he was doing. He was going to call me up, and I pretended to just kind of like not see him. And I parked <laughs> up, I've got out of the car, I'm walking towards me. I still not looked at him. I know he's there, and he's got Waldy, come up here. I've gone, yeah, no worries, Ray. Um, but this time round, I was just playing too well. I was I was in the team. I was on fire. I knew that it was a different situation to Watford, you know, um, and the players he he brought in: Felipe Galli, Ramon Vega. You know, wow, these guys were good players, but I know now I'm a better player than both of these guys. And yeah. I was, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I was. And uh, and he, he pulled me in his office, he went, Wally, he went, whatever happened to Watford happened, we're a clean slate, let's move on. I went, yeah, no worries. As long as you're happy to do that, right? He went, yeah, definitely. Um, but I'll be honest, throughout our whole time, as much as it was a bit of a love and hate relationship, you know, I don't think you could let go of that Watford thing too much. Um, Did you feel he was, like, he was like looking for an excuse at points as well if you had a bad, bad, bad game or something like that? I, it let me have it. Yeah, it let me have it. Yeah, it was a bit of that, I think, coming out. And But you know what? I, I'm not a sort of guy. I don't hold grudges. I, I wouldn't, you know, I'd, I'd have a temper. I did used to have a big temper. I did. And players saw that. And I, I'd certainly stick up for myself. That first period I was at the club when Wise was there. Yeah, I was a, a fiery guy, real, you know, focused. I want to get back to that prem, guys. And whoever wants to come with me, let's go. Whoever doesn't, get out of my way. That, that was my approach, you know, in a nutshell. Um, because you saw Reedy go. Obviously, Timmy went. There's a few other guys who mm. had previously um, moved on. And the question I was going to ask you, actually, is they all left. Obviously, you stayed on the extra year. Yeah. Is there a reason yeah. behind that? or? So um, what happened, I knew that Everton were watching Timmy and myself. Um, and I don't think anyone knew about this, but there were a number of premiership clubs watching us. And um, I knew Tottenham was sniffing for me. I knew Everton, Rangers, Aston Villa. And, um, and Timmy just had enough. You know, he, he just went, I need to go now. And I said, Timmy, come on, look, they're going to put money in and this, that and the other. And, and we had a conversation about it. Um, so I just felt that me personally, I wanted to get promoted to the Prem. That's what I wanted to do. For whatever reason at the time, that was in my head. And um, Timmy left. Theo said that he's going to put a lot of money in. We've got, you know, fantastic running FA Cup in Europe now. We're going to go for the Prem. So I'm like, right. So, OK, if we are, what, what's going to happen? Because I need to know that, you know, players are going to be coming in here. Um, he brought in was it Scott Doby? I think it was. That's right. Yeah, he wasn't there long, was he? he played like on up front, but wide right. He weren't there at five minutes. He was there for a matter of what two months, I think it was. Uh, he decent though, but I don't know why. Can't remember why he didn't stay now. Because I, I think it was the, the the decision from what I heard that um, he wanted the money back, uh, and he pulled the plug. Theo, he pulled the money out of it. So I'd signed a new three year deal, and within a couple of months or out of Europe. We knew that Theo wasn't interested. He was going to be leaving. And it was a, it was a tough season, a real tough season. Um, so 
it, I was obviously committed, but at the same time, I knew I had an opportunity for a club that really wanted, um, who, who are a, a high level premiership football. Um, mm. So a big commitment. And for someone to, to say that and then do it, it was kind of like, you know, as a player, you want to move, you, you, you want to develop. I obviously, we all wanted to develop at Millwall, but it wasn't happening. It wasn't happening there. Um, and as much as it's a fantastic club and we all wanted that to happen, you just can't make it happen, you know, if you don't, to a degree, if you don't have those funds. Mm. I think he let, he let, you know, let you keep them players. First season back, but didn't quite make it. Then he's probably let you have a full second season with all the players you added to that. And then when it hasn't, then he's, you know, maybe should have a bit of a longer plan than a two year plan. And you should have gone, right, you can have these for another two, three seasons. And then if yeah. it doesn't happen, then I'll, then you can, you know, you'll have to sell Timmy and Darren and whoever else, you know what I mean? Maybe it's a bit of a short term vision for him. I don't know. Well, I, I don't, I, at the time, I don't know. It was, it was just disappointing because, you know, how good of it had been to, to yeah. give that real good go and, you know, try to get in the Prem because you knew that, especially if you kept the, the likes of Timmy, yourself, Ives, um, even Livers, are another underrated player, really good player. You know, mm. we had the, the partnership, Matty and myself. We would have competed, we felt we would have competed in the Prem. We would have competed, not kind of winning the Premiership title or anything, but you know we're we're competing, we're, we're good enough for that level. Um, but yeah, it it never happened. Okay, mate. Yeah, so I suppose it would be criminal if we didn't talk about that FA Cup run, Tranmere, Sunderland, and of course Manchester United at Cardiff. What's your memories of those those matches? I think absolute dream come true. I think not not, not just for me as a player personally, but. As a squad, you know, you just, just kept that role going. And then every time there was an FA Cup game, we just seemed to produce the goods. Just um, the performance was there and, and nicking results. It wasn't really ever, I don't think, you know, by three or four goals, it was it was quite narrow. But um, we knew our strengths and that was keeping the goals out. And we knew that we were always dangerous of, of, of getting a goal at some stage during the game. Mm. A favourable run as well, some might say, but you still got to win those games. Old Trafford, Sunderland, great day out for the club. Oh, amazing. That, 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 was the, that was the final, I think, for us. Yeah. Um, to, to, to play there, to win that, to get to the final, that was it. You know, we, we just, I said this before, that was the hardest game of my career. There's not a game that's come close. Um, the, the, the amount of energy and focus that I put into a game has, has never come close to that game. Um, we we just had our backs against the wall for most of the game. You know, at the start it was fairly even, but when we scored, it was just that that was a real tough game. That second half was a nightmare. Um, but for what it's worth and all that effort, well, I'll do it again. That, that's, yeah. that's for sure. We rolled our luck a little bit, didn't we? I think I remember the job. John Oster at the bar from a free kick. We just seemed to have that little bit of luck. And we make the FA Cup final for the first time since God knows when. The hype building up to it, of course, was David versus Goliath. And it wasn't to be our day on the day. Um, do you think, obviously, you know, we brought big Danny Dicho in at that point, but he was out. I think you had Muska out and Warner all injured. Do you think, you know, their experience, aggression and, and things like that could have changed the outcome slightly, or were they just that fucking good United? This was his best team he put out. You know, Man United, Ronaldo, Scholes, Giggs, Keane, Van Nistelrooy. You know, you, you've got the best players playing. You know, this isn't why. Right, let's just bring the squad squad in and let's win this game. Um, and do you know what? I, I I hadn't watched the game back on TV until about a month ago. No, um, our oldest son, Ronnie, he's our dad. He said, do, do you want to watch FA Cup final? And do you know what? I've, I've never, never watched it. Um, but let's, let's put it on. We watched it. And do you know what? I actually thought, wow, we, we, we actually done all right. Yeah. We done all right. You know, we're not saying we're, we're creating loads of chances. We did have a couple. And if, I think Ife's had a great opportunity. If he cut it back to Chopper, wow. You know, yeah. Who knows? But, we conceded on, what is it, 42 or 43 minutes. It wasn't like, wow, we've been blown back. They had a lot of long-range shots, a lot of long-range, because our defence was very good. 
Um, mm. Yeah, it's just, it's just one of the things, right? It's, um, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But, you know, Dennis was struggling. Marvin was playing right back. Muzzy was a yeah. massive for us, a massive leader. Deitch, yeah. I, I love Deitch. I love playing with Deitch. He was just, just fantastic. What a guy. Um, you know, it's, yeah, just, you had, you had a young, young side out, didn't you, as well? You know, Sweden's come in and he was playing. Marv was kind of shaking his boots, looking ahead of him, seeing Ryan Giggs play right back, uh, centre mid. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just the occasion, right? Just, just, yeah. it's in the history books and we're forever proud ourselves and hopefully the fans are as, as proud as what we are for what, what we all did, not just the players, the fans. And just, mm. I think what, one of the, the kind of standout memories of celebrating was a win was at Old Trafford in the semi-finals. We just didn't want to leave. We just didn't want to leave. We're like, you, you can't take this in enough, you know, it's, um, yeah. It was just amazing, and what 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 an experience! Was you on um, Rude Van Nistelrooy duty in the final? Do you know what? I I actually had a chat with our son about that. He went, "Who was the best player on the pitch?" I went, <laughs> "I went at the time, I thought it was me." I went, "I'm man of the match." I did. I said, "I'm man." I was very confident about that. I'll tell everyone, it was me. I was. I marked him out of the game. How many shots do you have on goal, Van Nistelrooy? I think, I think you scored two. One was a penalty, though, wasn't it? He scored a pen. And he scored when he cut his side. I wasn't with him uh, on that side. I was playing the left. Um, I think he cut his side. I think Matt, he slipped or something. And then he's, he's, he slotted it in. I couldn't personally do a lot about it. But yeah, I'd marked him really well. Yeah, he was quiet. And I watched it. I hadn't watched it. And I watched it. I thought, Joe, you know what? I, I, I thought I'd, I had a good game. I thought I had a really good game. But it... He scores two goals. He's Man United. They won 3-0. They're not going to give it to him. They're not going to give it to Darren Ward, are they? Um, no, they, they was rolling teams across Europe a lot heavier than 3-0 in them days, were they? Oh, definitely. You, you look at a number of results. You know, it's you hemorrhage when you play against sides like that. So, again, just something to be proud of all round, the whole mm. thing. Then the following season, as we said, a lot of players left. It's about replacements coming in. You had like... No disrespect to him, Adrian Seriu, Josh Simpson. Barry Howells was decent, but yeah. it just looked like we was, you know, we conceded that, you know, that was our one push and we're not going to do it again. And then at the end of that season, you leave the club mm. for uh, Pastures New. Was that your decision? Um, so I had two years left on my contract. Um, the club asked me to leave. And the reason they asked me to leave is because I was the highest paid player at the club. And that was a big contract that they had to get rid of as well. Um, so, um, although I stayed, that come at a kind of price because if I've got premiership clubs knocking on the door and offering me three, four year deals on big, big money, you know, come on guys. I'm not saying give me that, but let's do a deal here because I want to stay. Um, but I can't be staying on money which you know it's your career you got in some money right and, and this is how it is you know you're looking to have a family you're looking to do stuff who knows when it could be ended what if i break my, my leg again you know i, I might sure. not come back last time you, you have to you have to think about those things and um when theo left um yeah um they said you gotta go you gotta go and we're gonna get the best price for you um, so it was 500, it went to 750, it went to 900. And then that gradually, the teams are involved. It just got less and less and less. And yeah. then it came to, at that time, it was three clubs. And uh, one was Norwich, the other one was Palace, and the last one was West Ham. West Ham were in the Prem. And that was at that moment. I, I got told, quite a few people who knew the game, they said, wait, wait, you will get a good club, a, a better club, you know, sorry, a bigger club in the Premiership than these three. Um, people saying that Tottenham, again, were interested. Well, also at the time, I'm sure it was Aston Villa again. Um, I had a lot of big clubs overseas as well. Um, you know, I was saying that Bob Peters was saying, go and sign for the best club in Belgium and <laughs> play Champions League football. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm all right, thanks. And with all due respect, Cheers, I've got Bob. clubs here. You know, I've got Prem rather than 
you know, and and the wages they were offering, you know, it, it and then the price that I went up to, you know, it's um, one point one point one million initially, up to one point five, and that was what when I was twenty six, twenty seven, so seventeen years ago. Mm. So, yeah, I was. I know, was people saying you, you know, the best and a half in the champ. So what would the best and a half in the champ go for nowadays? Yeah. Ridiculous, eight million to that, and the rest. Yeah, it'd be more. I, I personally, it'd be more than ten million, more than best centre half, and what wages mm. on it? It's just spiraled, silly, and um, and what happened is there was a bit of a kind of Simon Jordan and CEO. They were kind of best buddies, weren't they? Away from football, and yeah. um, you know, I had a decision to make. Norwich wasn't kind of an interest to me when you had other clubs and then um West Ham, my brother was there. I can't be competing against my brother and it's West Ham, right? So West Ham <laughs> Palace. What about that for Joy Silly Meal? Oh, no. Um I, I suppose it's good though as a as a player like you, you don't get the, at the time people go, oh fuck him, he's gone palace. But yeah. they don't know that you know the club are gone you we've had great service out here for, for four years. We yeah. bought you for X amount we're gonna see you for over double that. So not yeah. like thanks very much, Darren. Pat on the back. It's fuck him. He went pallid. Yes. <laughs> it was. I just got player of the year two years in a row. We just got to an FA Cup final. Yeah. UEFA Cup. Um, I think beat the clean sheet history over the two <laughs> seasons. You know, just got one point one million and quickly went up to one point five million for the club. Yeah, it's three times what we paid for you. Come on, guys. You know, I, you know, and let's be honest. You know. People say, oh, yeah, centre half. I said, well, guys, looking at those stats, what centre half has done that in the history of the club? Mm. You that's know, a fair point, mate. It's a fair point. Look, look it, you know, and, and that's something which, not, not, you know, it's for people's opinions, right? To, to judge what I, what I did and how good I was and whatever. It's, it's people's opinions. It really doesn't bother me. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm not a guy who kind of, you never see me on social media. Never shouting about on TV. I've got loads of opportunities to do loads of things. Step in straight back into football. I do what's right for me and my family. And if it's right, I do it. And I will do it. And that's that's where I'm different to a lot of footballers. I just won't do it um, for reasons that are selfish. I'll do it for the right reasons. Mm, fair play to you, mate. So you leave the club 2005. Five, almost six years later... You come back, you're a Wolves player, you originally come back on loan, that quickly turns into a three and a half year deal. What was you expecting when you came back through the door? Because when you came in, we was on the up, but just as you was leaving, you know, the shit was starting to hit the fan, if you like. What was you expecting uh, when you come back and what did you walk into? Do you know what? I, I When I walked back, I was, obviously I, I knew Kenny from Watford. So Kenny was my youth team coach when I joined and, and Kenny had been brilliant for me. Honestly, he'd stuck by me you know, through when I joined the club, we had some youth team there, by the way, at Watford. We were different class, arguably the best youth team in the history of the club. You know, there were 16 YTS players. There's, there's a picture of a squad, 16, 15 professionals out of 16. Jesus. That's how good we were over like a three-year period. The year above me, our year, and then the year below. I think between all the players, there's thousands and thousands of professional games since, you know, you're talking a high, high level, real, real lucky period, I suppose, how, how things has come together, how maybe the recruitment, how so many good players were close to Watford. Um, mm. And Kenny was a big part of that. He, he, he played a huge part. Kenny, John McDermott, um, Rob Kelly, uh, Bobby Downs, a huge part played Tom Wally as well, uh, Luther Blissett. And and they stuck with us, and and this is you saw Watford. Some of the players that come through the ranks there, especially in the Prem, um, really impressive. So when Kenny um, come knocking, I, I just felt that you know I'd left Millwall, not really on the terms I would have liked. They're in League One. I'm like, come on, guys, what are Millwall doing in League One? With all due respect, you know, um, I was at Watford in the Premiership. Uh, sorry, uh, Wolves in the Prem. I dropped two leagues. And again, I think showed um, some loyalty to the club. I was on a lot of money. 
Uh, my wages were really, really high. And um, yeah. I said, Kenny, right, I'd love to join, but we're going to have to <laughs> chat here, you know, and a real serious chat because this is, again, what I'm earning. And he's like, are you sure? Let me have a look at that. And, and again, <laughs> you, you, you're, you're miles away, honestly, yeah. from one to prem. It's just, you know, this is what you, 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 you're kind of on. And um, I, I took a, a pay cut. I took a big pay cut. I took a massive gamble. If we didn't get promoted... I didn't have a contract, you know, and um, and then that's when I signed a new deal at the end when we got promoted. So again, I joined, I rejoined for Wolves. I wasn't fit. I hadn't played as much football. Mm. It was a bit of a sticky one. At the back end of my time at Wolves, um, I um, a number of things happened because I was in the team. I played a lot first season, and then when I come back, me and Mick just decided time to move on. But then when I went alone got a few injuries i cracked my cheekbone i had a number i just broke my, my chest bone oh, i had a number of things i was i was going through the wars honestly i was i was really yeah tough times but then i said right me all let, let's go and do a job let, let's let's go and get them back into the champ um and that was my, my my vision that was my goal and uh just over the moon that we done it nearly all night mm. in the end and but hey if you can't really, if, if you know, you, could, if you don't know, know, but if you can go up for the playoffs, it's the best way to go up, right? So, um, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, I still prefer it. Just I'm in them, I suppose. Mm. But, um, but you came back to the club, and at this time, there was a new breed. We're still a few old teammates. New Aris was back. Um, who else we got there? I, I saw an inch down that was still there. Oh, Tony Craig. Tony Craig was still there. I, but you yeah. had some players that would become Millwall big hitters and legends. Forty, yep. Robbo, Steve yep. Morrison, Dunny, yep. Dunny, good pedigree as well. Still in that team. Yeah, oh, it was a really good side, really, really good side. Um, and for, for for that level, for that level, you yeah. know, it was, I mean, went back and there's some some people I can't remember who was saying to me, oh, um, um, because it was it um Tony Burns, the old goalkeeping coach, he was there both times. He actually left Millwall, went to Palace when I was at Palace. Right. And then he went back to Millwall. And, and people used to ask when I went back, oh, when we got promoted, everyone's buzzing, oh, who's a better team? All these the the team in the FA Cup final or this team? And I look at Tony Burns and he'd go, because he, he knows, he he knows Yeah, yeah. Different uh, level. It was, guys. You, you can't, you can't, you know, you can't compare it. You know, Timmy mm -hmm. Cat, Reedy, Livers, I, myself at my prime. That was my mm -hmm. prime there. Guys, you, you can't, you know, Matty Lawrence, Marshy. It, it, this is another level, guys. This is Prem compared to a, 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 a not bad championship side, maybe yeah, mid yeah. side. Um, and but people have their own opinions, right? They they can they're allowed to, and not, no problems. But say so it's still a very good side, and um, and and from that side, you know, a few testimonials along the way, Dunny, Robbo, and Chopper, and you know, yeah, great, great to see it. Great for the club, great for the players, um, and again, brought some really good times back to the club. Mm. For, well, was your role different at this point? You come back a lot more senior pro than you was originally. Did you have a different like? Roles playing around the dressing room. Yeah, I was. Um, so I was what thirty, just uh, was thirty-one. I think it was at the time. Uh, a lot of experience, hadn't played as much. Took time to get fit. Got in the team, and again, well by myself. Great partnership. Just kept going. Clean sheets, clean sheets, winning. Um, got that promotion, and then yeah, started off well. Bristol City away, was it? 4 nil was it, I think? Mm. Um, got a goal, Rob well, got a goal, two centre half scoring on the, on the first day of the season. Um, and then things kind of, say, fell away a little bit. They, they become a little bit harder, um, you know. Um, but, you know, we stabilised ourselves. You yeah. Know, getting a champ, um, good season. But then things, things change, you know. Uh, if I'm being honest, I wasn't the player that I was first time around. You know, my life had changed. A lot had gone on. A lot was happening. 
we had a family there was you know a, a lot of th things things change I wasn't as kind of maybe settled as I was the first time around when I was closer to the club um but hey still brought some great times and you yeah. know the only good thoughts and good um, positive kind of feedback for, for, for those times there yeah I think you left at the end when Kenny Jackett left and I think you've had so many good times there as, as a player you know Europe playoff wins you know FA Cup finals that there's nothing wrong I know no this was you know being in the championship and just being established yeah like you yeah. say I saw Peter that he did under Kenny a bit with you know in the end he left in the end and you left as well. But if you could pick one standout memory for your time at the club, I know it's difficult. What would you probably pick one standout memory? Um, standout memory, I, I, I think it's it's got to be a win in the semi-final at Old Trafford against Sunderland. I just, you know, that's just the, the biggest dream come true, isn't it? You play an FA Cup final. You know, you, you're doing it at this level in front of however many people, you know, you could say pay in an FA Cup final, but I think the, the achievement was semi, you know, semi-final. That, that that was the achievement, you know, because you've got to get to that final. Yeah. And to that, playing against a team, you know, of, of that level that, that Man United held at the time, that was the, the most, I think, and like I said earlier, the amount of effort I put into that, that was really, 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 tough um and to and to kind of you know put it in history books right if yeah. come, you know whoever would have imagined that in the season when right. Martin left the club um so yeah i think that was that the semi-final was probably the, the biggest standout and, and there was a lot you know the win over west ham yeah. you know obviously again two player seasons two years in a row i don't i think that's done by only achieved by i think someone told me by one other player in the history of the club you know, as a centre half to win player of the season two years in a row, that's an achievement. You know, and, which is great personally, but I was always looking for um, for medals, and I wanted to lift trophies and to come back and to to win that playoff. That was that was that was also a great time. You know, to get Mill back into the champ and, and win something that was fantastic as well. But semi final. Was you? Um, I thought I'd take it away from you. Slightly pissed off, it was at the Millennium Stadium and not Wembley or not. Is that your control? Yeah, do you know, United. but then then we got you know on the return to to, to Mill, we we got there in the playoffs, so yeah, yeah, you got you got there in the end. Do you know what? I'd, I, I probably would have rather ticked them all off, but yeah, you, you've, you've done them both, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been very fortunate enough to play for some you know big clubs, some. You know, all around the, uh, and play at big stadiums all the way around the world, all over the world. So, yeah, to, to kind of get it all in as much as you can, and you know, your career has to end as hard as it is at times. And you're looking at it thinking, oh, I'd, you know, I'd love to put on a shirt now and play. Things change, and and you have to accept it. And you have to move on. But only good, good kind of memories, great memories from the club, a brilliant club um, of Mill. Final question I always ask. If you could meet up tonight or tomorrow, have a day out or a night out with your choice, three of your ex-team mill teammates at Millwall. Yeah. Which three are you taking with you? Um I would take um who would I take? Who would I take? Tony Craig. Tony Craig, he's I've we still keep in touch now. What a guy. Call each other roomies to room each other a lot. Just the nicest down to earth guy you meet in your life. Be honest, you know. No kind of no rubbish. You just tear is he's just a lovely guy. He never changed, and I love how he is. How he lives his life, and he's got a lovely family. And uh, so Tony, um, who else would it be? I, I would say Matty Lawrence. Matty Lawrence. I think the, the kind of the time we had, how well we did together. You know, Matty would be up there. And um, who else would it be? Who else? Um, do you know what? Um, I would, I would probably say, I'd probably say Wisey. To be fair, um, Wisey, would, yeah, yeah, I, I got on well Wisey when I was at the club. Um, for him, I was a big player for him. You know, we, we worked well with each other. Uh, I think to, to kind of have a sit down with those three, and there's others. You know, there's loads. It's Paul Robinson, course, yeah, with um, it's many. Robbie Ryan, lovely guy. You know, Marshy got on well with as well, really well. 
but those three, Tone, I think, yeah, Matty and uh, and Wisey, those three will probably be the first I would be uh, leaning to. Brilliant, mate. Well, listen, thanks for your time. Really appreciate you coming on. Apologies about that technical hitch halfway through, but just as I said, two spells at the club. It's not often that you get someone on that's played at two fantastic times for the club, an FA Cup final, semi-final, and then to play in Europe, and then to come back and win promotion again. Mm. Great player for the club, mate. Real pleasure having you on. Yeah. No, it's an absolute pleasure, and um, uh, it'll be, you know, our, 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 our oldest son, Ronnie, is coming through the ranks of football now, so Maybe one day, if Mill need another centre half, another ward there, he's he's a very good player, Ronnie. So keep an eye out. Since I don't live near Mill at the minute, but when it comes to uh, signing forms at sixteen, seventeen, it's uh, yeah, he's um, he's asked me questions about Mill, and I said, look, obviously distances at this state, at this age, you know, it's it's too far. But you know, if it comes to it, we never know. Um, but uh, but yeah, but overall, really appreciate inviting me on, and again, what what a club. You know, I um, feel so privileged to have played at a club like Mill. Uh, love my time and um, and maybe maybe back there one day at some to some degree. Yes, hope so, mate. Great to have you on, mate. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Take yeah, care. Cheers, right. mate. Thank you. Have a good bye. Bye.